monitor baby triceratops like the one you see here. Hey, darling. What do we have here? That's right. A velociraptor. Velociraptors are extremely fast. Seems to recur every six weeks. Symptoms include imbalance, disorientation, and labored... You know how I said that for me, analog horror is one of the scariest types in the book when it comes to getting genuine fear reactions? Well, you may call me even crazier after I let you guys know that there is something out there far more sinister that shakes me to my core. Don't get me wrong, I am a huge Jurassic Park and dinosaur fan, and when I was little, I used to be a huge nerd about them. But oddly enough, as I got older, the fear started to grow. I have a theory as to why, because this couldn't have come out of nowhere. You see, I began to have some ridiculously terrifying nightmares about getting chased by a T-Rex or just being in close proximity to one. And I gotta say, even though it's a dream, that feeling of pure terror is absolutely real because even when I wake up, I have to give myself a minute to recover if I ever have a T-Rex encounter in a dream. But even to this day, I still dread the thought of having to go through another nightmare with a T-Rex attack. If you stick around to the very end of the video, I tell a specific T-Rex dream that has me traumatized to this day, so be sure to stick around. But this video is not about my personal fears about dinosaurs, but a horrifying combination I had the misfortune of stumbling upon on YouTube. Jurassic Park Analog Horror. I just know that diving deep into this realm is certain to bring back the terrifying dreams tonight. However, fears are meant to be conquered, so let us all hold hands as we enter this realm of which not many come out the same. For those who have been living under a rock your whole life, the Jurassic Park movie was based on a book written by Michael Crichton, and I have yet to read the book, even though I want to. But from what I have seen and heard, it's a horror book. Downright, they are meant to strike fear into the hearts of readers, and if the movie, which I don't even think it was supposed to do, was able to strike my heart with fear, then I have no idea what would happen once I get to reading the book. One day I would really love, however, to see a movie reimagining that adapts more of the horror elements that were in the books. Even though the book had child murder, but I mean, come on. When it comes to analog horror on YouTube, there are tons upon tons of Jurassic Park entries out there. So let's not waste any more time and get into these terrifying dinosaur horror pieces. All links will be down below. In today's video, we will be showing you how you should act when a dinosaur decides to attack into a vehicle that you are in. To start off this ride, we have a video of safety collection tapes. I'm sure safety isn't even something we need to worry about. I think we're all okay. Our video begins as a hostile dinosaur safety video. Section 1 is an HVA emergency. This seems to be if an herbivore dinosaur starts going a little rough on the jeep. Luckily, we can just call security and they can play noises off the speaker to scare off the dinosaurs. Section 2 is a CBOE emergency, seemingly if we get a power outage as the island gets lots of tropical storms. This will cause the fences in the park to shut down, meaning that a carnivore like Joker... <laughs> Prohibited. Well, that was certainly something. We flashed through a bunch of images consisting of the T-Rex eating people, this weird long-legged dinosaur, a bunch of velociraptors, and even a flash of Robert Muldoon from the book and movie. This has already been something else entirely when it comes to these analog horror tapes. The fact that the movies didn't delve into the horror potential it could have is an honest tragedy. After the flashing images and loud noises, we get a voice telling us that viewing of this tape is prohibited and to discard it immediately. Uh oh guys, looks like we are going to immediately break these rules because it's time for the next entry in the safety collection tapes. Velociraptor Escape Tape See, oddly enough, I never had horrible nightmares about velociraptors, so I don't have such a visceral fear response when I sense one approaches. Who knows, maybe this video will change that. This video begins on an audio log of someone stressfully telling someone that there has been a breach in security and that the raptor is on the loose before we quickly cut to static, before we are met with footage of a clearly broken through fence. It doesn't look like just the raptors got out however- Oh fuck me! After that nightmare, we are welcome to an instructional Velociraptor video, making sure to mention how fast they are. These raptors certainly have it out for Robert before we are met with another flashing image spree. We are then met with footage from what looks like inside a cage, where raptor eyes peer from the dark before jumping out at us. Almost straight out of the first movie, we are seeing found footage from the kitchen, and we are not alone. As our poor character tries to make it out, the raptor is just too much as we get pounced and eaten. So far it doesn't seem like these tapes specifically follow a narrative, but let's see if this third episode ties anything together. This next entry has us back following another safety guide. This one has to do with a stegosaurus encounter and preventing the animal from going into a panic. 
we are instructed to keep flashing lights and alarms away from its vicinity before we are told the very honest truth that 14 men totally did not lose their lives on August 5th, 1997 due to a Stegosaurus encounter. We definitely did not have 14 men die from a Stegosaurus encounter on August 5th, 1997. Sure, buddy. We believe you. Our tape glitches out and a face is flashed at us before we hear a phone conversation between an engine employee and Henry Wu. He's also from the movies. He's this guy. Our employee is in a frenzy, seeing as how he was chased into an office building late in the night by something very large that looked like a crocodile. Uh oh. We occasionally flash to a map showing us where the Spinosaurus is in the building and where the worker is. Unfortunately for our worker, the dinosaur has already gotten his scent and is headed right towards him. I believe it's hinted at here that Henry is the guy behind the security tapes, but I'm not too sure. We check security cameras to see it's making its way closer. At this point, the Spinosaurus has made its way right down the hall. After asking for help, Henry tells us we are history and that we will be remembered, as if pulling a funny prank, until big eyes peer through the glass. As the Spinosaurus makes its way closer, our poor employee inevitably gets eaten up. Only after this, we are shown an instructional video about the Spinosaurus, said to be a very calm and lovely animal during the day, but one gets especially rowdy and hungry for flesh during the night. I don't know about calm and lovely, but I mean, well, we'll see. It seems as if, however, there is no escaping this dinosaur, as if you are caught outside with him, he probably has already heard and or caught your scent, and you're screwed. Plus, the doors get locked at midnight, so you are basically just lunch. We watch and see just that very thing happen to another poor soul before one of the more unnerving scenes in the series of entries. Is this trying to tell me that this Spinosaurus is much more sentient than we could have guessed? After this, we fade in on a newspaper article talking about the worker who was found dead in an office. The top and bottom of his head were reportedly completely crushed and ripped apart. We see near the bottom that one of the suspects behind his murder is Henry Wu. Is it possible that he orchestrated this event to happen? Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there are any answers to be found just yet, as I imagine there is more to come out. Who knows if the creator will decide they want to put more episodes out? I would really hope they do, considering this series looks like it's going into a very interesting direction with the Spinosaurus. Next on our list, we have the Engine Tapes. This series follows a son whose dad, Dennis Todd, went missing at Jurassic Park during the opening years working as a security officer. Out of the blue, he has left a box of VHS tapes and after being instructed by a note to distribute the tapes, he decides to do so by uploading them to YouTube for us to watch now. The first video is glitchy footage of what looks to be underground somewhere, with a robotic voice repeating that Dennis Todd was found dead in his security office in Dennis Warehouse 13. Todd was found dead in his security office in Warehouse 13. Before we cut to an engine security logo. Not very long, only about 30 seconds, but enough to put you into the world's atmosphere just awaiting us. Next entry is Hostile Encounter Training, going through what we can pretty much already expect. We are shown five crucial and life-saving steps to survive a potential dinosaur attack. My first step would be to crawl into a ball and accept defeat, as I would be too struck with fear. But luckily, this isn't my job. Our steps are pretty simple. The first step is to not move no matter the distance. Second is to send a distress beacon with your radio. Three is to stay calm. Yeah, okay, good luck. Four is to stay still if approached. And five is to only move after the creature is handled with. I wonder who this woman Megan Diego is. I am assuming she's probably a perfect example of someone who got attacked. As we move on from the photo, we learn it was not only her last day, but also her first day, and that she didn't watch this presentation. Imagine missing the security training video on how not to get killed by a dinosaur, and that immediately leads to you being killed by a dinosaur. Just like the first video, the son is back in the description to give us a bit more details on the narrative we are following. He googled the woman and confirmed the fact that she did indeed work at the park and disappeared in the same way. Our third tape covers an incident of a tropical storm hitting the island and reaping absolute havoc. After cutting away from what appeared to be a commercial for the part, we are shown an emergency message for said tropical storm and we are warned to seek shelter immediately and to stay away from any of the enclosures. We then cut out and see an engine security report on the storm. 2,500 visitors were accounted for, except for a measly 17 people. It looks as if 12 of those 17 were then found later on, however. Not all was happy and fun, as there were unfortunately two casualties. 
Caught on security cameras were a total of seven dinosaurs leaving and roaming the park. Three have been found, but four of them still remain missing and just roaming the area. All visitors were removed from the island, and according to the public, the reasoning was due for maintenance repairs, and whoever made this report doubts the real story will get out anytime soon. We learn the identities of the two casualties being Clyde and Amber Jones. It appears they had a camera on them brought to take nice trip photos, except this was the only picture that they were able to take. Following this entry, we begin by watching a silly little Jurassic Park McDonald's ad before we cut out to another video from Engine Security. Attention, this ad is not intended for public viewing or individual visual permission. We are then being shown about the relocation project. This basically consists of moving all the high-risk dinosaurs away from the public park and moving them over to Site B, which is a park they do not want the public knowing about, it seems. What nefarious actions do they have going on at Site B, I wonder? We see images of each dinosaur being moved over. Each is pretty hard to make out, and Asset 87 has no photo at all. However, right after, we are met with some cryptic messages. They lie and lie. A kingdom of lies. They brought back the dead and something else. And that is the latest episode of this series. This is a pretty small channel with some good potential in creating a really good Jurassic Park analog horror, and I would love to see it played out further. What's funny is since all these different analog horror series being about Jurassic Park and including a lot of similar characters and location names makes it feel like all of them are interconnected in some way. So if a Spinosaurus comes up in any of these next ones, we are going to have a problem. This next one is only one video, but it is honestly the reason I wanted to make this video, considering it is literally my worst nightmare come to life. The San Diego Incident. This video is completely found footage and takes place during the second movie, The Lost World. We follow someone in their house with their camcorder filming because they heard a really loud rumbling that is setting off sirens, as if an earthquake in the area, before we hear that loud bellowing roar. Our character runs downstairs and goes outside. It doesn't take long for street poles to start falling over and cars to get thrown through the fence. The footsteps grow louder as we look around in fear, before the sight of a large tail hovers above, before the whole head shows itself. <laughs> My god, I think I almost shit my pants. This guy getting this close and flashing his light is crazy, I tell you. I'm not surprised when this happens. I definitely just shit my pants. This is literally a scene ripped right from my dreams. I can't really describe the pure fear I would feel when I would wake up after having to endure an entire T-Rex encounter while I was just trying to hang out in my house or enjoy school. There was always a T-Rex around the corner to come fuck my dreams up. A cool fact, however, is that this whole scene can be played out in PlayStation Dreams, where it looks like you can control the camera and the zoom. Actually, after digging around, it looks like this guy has a whole fan game in development. That is really cool. The creator just uploaded a development update, and if you have a PlayStation Plus, I think you'll be able to play it. I know I'll be certainly checking it out because it looks like a horror game in Jurassic Park, and that's incredible. I know this is cheating, since this is technically not analog horror, it's just an animation. But this channel makes these really cool animated horror short films. A lot of what I've seen looks like it is meant to do what we all wanted to see since the beginning, a faithful adaptation of the pure terror of Jurassic Park, the books. It isn't live action, but this guy's animation is really good and really feels like I am watching a film. Their shot composition really shows they know their stuff in the animated world and in the filmmaking one, and I'm a huge fan of their work now. I just got done checking out their Nedry episode, and it was truly something else to get to see that scene played out the way it was supposed to. The one that introduced me, however, was the infant short film. And for all of my Jurassic Park book fans out there, I'm sure you know exactly the road that video leads. While all entries mentioned prior weren't analog horror, it still shows how much horror is tied to the Jurassic Park IP, and as it should I must say. Dinosaurs are really scary, and the idea of these giant reptile creatures that can just completely obliterate you is awful, especially when they enter from your dreams. It's not like the original trilogy or kitty movies by any means, I was still horribly frightened watching them when I was little. Hell. It is probably just because of my T-Rex trauma, but when I first saw Jurassic World, I had to be about 14, and I was still tensed up the whole time because these movies are just anxiety-inducing nightmares. I actually haven't seen Dominion, but I heard not so good things, so I'm a little afraid to anyways. Last thing I want to mention that seems cool is that these analog horror series that were based in Jurassic Park seem to get some inspiration from potentially leaked 
or unreleased concepts that were going to be used for like potential Jurassic Park 4s. I watched these two videos on it and it really seems that like the first video with the Spinosaurus potentially being sentient could have to do with like the human dinosaur hybrids that this video talks about and that other series that seemed to be having to do with Site B which this video talks about being a potential script for the fourth movie. I don't know, I just thought that was cool that these analog horror pieces are technically taking what we could have seen in Jurassic Park 4 and actually like playing them out and showing them to people. But that's about all I have to say with this video. I'm sure there are tons upon tons of more analog horror Jurassic Park videos out there worthy of your attention. And by all means, I will be sticking around to see if these creators make any more entries into their stories. I would love to see all of them continue on to see where they take us. But before I forget, I have that dream to tell you guys who stuck around. This is being narrated directly off of my notes document, unedited, so if there is some silly wordings, it's because it was more than likely 4am and I was half asleep and still recovering from fear. But here we go. This starts at my house and I am with a couple of friends. And it's like, one night a year dinosaurs come back and roam around for whatever reason. I don't have the answers. But we're preparing and shit and we are stacking up on food and stuff and honestly, I'm horrified. I'm starting to not be able to handle it. It isn't nighttime yet, but we are starting to put some shit in my car as a backup, just in case my house doesn't work and things fuck up. And then lo and behold, a couple minutes later, there's a T-Rex walking around in my backyard. This of course makes Jax, my tiny dog, let out a couple barks, which made me almost choke his ass out. Jaden, my loud friend, was also with us, so it was a mix of fear, but also slight curiosity of peeking ever so slightly out of the windows. I guess Jax had a bark that was a little too loud, and the T-Rex was like, this is it boys, and started ramming his ass into the house. Then suddenly out of nowhere, my father in his big truck does this literal impossible ramp up into the backyard to speed around the T-Rex and distract it to get it to chase him. But once he gets around the house, which is out of the dinosaur's line of sight, he does this Tokyo Drift fast and furious move where he drifts behind the trees as a hiding spot. I guess only a couple seconds after that it was morning and time for the dinosaurs to go back. Thank fuck, this was terrifying. I fucking hate dream dinosaurs. Yeah, clearly I wasn't very happy when I woke up from that. But if you stuck around to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching, and be sure to give the video a like and a subscribe, and leave a comment down below about your scary experiences with Jurassic Park, whether it be the movies, the books, or the horror we are witnessing now online. But other than that, I will catch you guys in the next video.